Hello. Have you been looking through your seed catalogs? Have they been arriving through the post? They've been arriving here at homegrown veg. They're not of a great deal of interest to me, I'm a vegetable man. Um, have you been looking at the gardening magazines? Here's some advice on onions. Shallots, sets, full onions. Get some good stuff in these uh, gardening magazines. Uh, but here's one that caught my eye. Here's a gardening magazine that uh, caught my eye. Check out this article. Okay, it's a veg growing planner. That's good, isn't it? Lists of veg, lists of herbs, lists of salad crops, what you can grow, where you can grow it, where they would advise you not to try and grow it, um, whether it's easy, whether it's difficult. I'm mainly interested in this one here because this is the one uh, for root vegetables. And if you're a follower of mine, you'll know that I like to try and grow root vegetables in, uh, in pots. And there's actually a recommendation here, you grow in pots. And if you get a tick, presumably you can grow in pots. If you get a cross, presumably the advice is don't grow in pots. Okay, let's get up a bit closer on this uh, particular table here. Okay, now I'm mainly interested in the advice that says don't grow it in pots um, because as you know here at homegrown veg we like a challenge don't we we like a challenge so let's just go down this list uh, and we've got shallots and yeah we've got a tick growing pots and yes it's easy we've got onion sets yeah growing pots and it's easy now when we come to leeks don't grow in pots and it ain't easy Hey, how about that? Well, we grow leeks in pots here at homegrown veg. We grow them in those 10 inch water buckets and we don't find it difficult. But let's carry on down there. Cabbage, don't grow it in pots. I've tried to grow cabbage in pots and I've got to admit that any of the uh, brassica family I've had to give up on because just too many butterflies, just too many caterpillars. Um, and they eat the cabbage before I get a chance to eat the cabbage. Uh, and that goes for block broccoli, that goes for um, Brussels sprouts, it goes for cauliflower. Any of the brassica family, I've had to give up on them. I, I just can't keep the butterflies off. Uh, I'm fighting a losing battle. Right, parsnips. Don't grow them in pots and it ain't easy. Well, we've done that, eat it homegrown veg, haven't we? And what I'm going to do, after I've got down this list, uh, I'm going to cut you to some extracts for, from some videos that I've shot over the years that actually show me harvesting leeks and celery and beetroot and potatoes and onions and carrots from pots, from buckets. Um, so unless you try, you don't know. If you were to take this advice um, it's probably sound advice but it isn't 100% advice at least I don't think it is oh yeah celery growing pots gets a cross easy to grow gets another cross well, well check out the videos that are going that I'm going to cut you to shortly you'll see some celery being harvested from a bucket which to all intents and purposes is a 10 inch pot, isn't it? Uh, beetroot, yeah, we grew that, says it's okay to grow that. Broccoli, I've give up on that. Brussels sprouts, I've give up on that. Carrots, yeah, you can grow them in pots, but it isn't easy. Well, to be honest, I've, I've had no issues growing carrots, and, and you'll see from some of my videos. Cucumber, no, I never tried those. Runner beans, Never tried those, certainly not in buckets and pots. Sweet corn, 
Yeah, the advice is don't grow them in pots and they're not easy to grow. Well, I have actually grown them in pots and I've grown them to have been about five or six foot tall and I've got lots of cobs. But my problem here at homegrown veg in the north of England, in the UK, too much wind, too much rain, I just can't get them to pollinate properly. And I know I've had all the advice about paint brushes, paper bags, do this, do that, do the other. I think I've given up on sweet corn. Courgettes, yeah, you can grow them. Uh, French beans, yeah, you can grow those in, uh, in buckets. I've never had a go at either of those two. Squash, never tried it. The advice is not in buckets. What we got here? Pumpkin, uh, not in buckets, I've never tried that. Cauliflower, not in buckets, I've tried that. Caterpillars eat them before I get a chance. Garlic, that's something you can grow in buckets and it's easy. But we'll find that out, won't we? Because we're trying that this year. Um, peas, no, I haven't tried those. And broad beans. I've tried the dwarf variety, uh, but it wasn't really a success. Okay, now potatoes aren't on this list, they're on a list on the other side, but yeah, you're advised you can grow those in pots or buckets and it's easy. Okay, let me cut you to those videos. Um, and then come back to me and we'll round this video up. Well, we've just about pulled it off more. The battery warning light's flashing on the camera, so we haven't got much longer with this one. A uh, pound and a half, what do you reckon? One potato in, pound and a half out. 10 inch water bucket, come on, this is a result. This is a result. And if you're growing in five gallon buckets, you're growing in something twice as big as a 10 inch water bucket and you may be planting two potatoes in there, three, I don't know, but I'm planting one potato in a 10 inch water bucket and I'm getting one and a half pound in return. Charlotte potatoes, come on Mob, that's for Sunday lunch, isn't it? That's for Sunday lunch. Okay, so this is homegrown veg, signing out. I've come outside to tidy up this wheelbarrow, take the soil out of it and put it back into this bucket uh, for recycling. And look what I've found! Three more Charlotte in this bucket. So we're going to do another way in. We'll start with that one and a half pound and we'll add these three to it and see what we get. Hey, I can't believe it. 
Remember, this is just a 10 inch water bucket. With one potato in it. Let me just come round your side, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's looking okay. I'll put these three on and then I'll zoom in. One. Come on, come on, that's a pound and three quarters. <laughs> that's a pound and three quarters. One potato in all those out. Ten inch good plow water bucket. Hold on, we're zooming in. Okay, well that's the end of the fun for today and we definitely are signing out now. So this is homegrown veg, signing out. Whoa, how about that? <laughs> I think I'm going to need to adjust the camera, I'm fairly sure I am. Hey, what do you think of that? From that to that in four months, four months in that pot. Come on. They're enormous. Right. So what we're going to do now is um, these are four pot bottles stapled together. I normally put these on it to act as wind breaks because when these onions first go outdoors it is probably quite windy. We're in the spring of the year and um, I don't, just don't want them to get blown over, so I put these in and I support them using sticks. I just put some sticks in. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take these off, let you get a better look at these onions, um, but then I'm going to take them away from this table somewhere where I can um, take them out of the pot without making too much of a mess indoors. Then I'm going to bring them back, show you them, and we're going to weigh them. Does that sound good? We'll see what weight of onions we've got from this small 10 inch water bucket. Okay. Now, if these guys are ready to be harvested, they should just fall over, shouldn't they? Let me pop these sticks on one side. There we go, let's take these off. They're ready for this. That wasn't scripted, it just happened. Let me stand them up again, give you another shot of that. Okay, so as you can see, the necks have gone. Uh, these onions are ready to be harvested. And what I've noticed actually is one of these onions is actually split into two. So we're not going to get one, two, three, four onions, we're going to get five onions. It just gets better. And I hope the camera can look into that pot, but I think as you can see, there ain't much space left in there, is there? Those onions are shoulder to shoulder. Can you see that? Those onions are shoulder to shoulder. Can you see that? Okay, I'm going to take this away, uh, get these onions out of this bucket, uh, and then we'll take a closer look and, and we'll weigh them. We'll see what we've got for our efforts. Well, this is taking longer than I thought it would. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to um, dovetail in now uh, some video I shot this morning of me and the dogs on the seashore. And then I'll come back to you uh, with the onions.
pop this tea towel over the top of this bucket. Um, we'll sit the onions on there. That's a big onion. Come on, that's a big onion. Out of a small 10 inch water bucket. And this is the guy that's uh, split. What we'll do is we'll take a couple of um, skins off, like this. How's that? And then we'll just break it like this. How's that? Two for the price of one. It just gets better, doesn't it? Two for the price of one. So we've now got five onions from this, uh, this 10 inch water bucket. Let me pop them down there. Um, I always like to leave about uh, three or four inches on of stem on the onion. I think it helps to keep uh, disease from going down the neck when the onions are in storage. I'm not too sure if that's true, but that's what I do anyway. Okay, I'll just go and get the scale. Oh, I forgot we had five. I done four, I thought we were finished. We've got five, haven't we? Okay, I'll just go and get the scales. Okay, we're going to uh, go with the biggest first. And that is a big onion. For an onion grown outside in a water bucket. What have we got? Is that just over a pound for one onion? <laughs> right, let's put the rest of them on there if we can get them to stand. What's it looking like? And this guy's going to have to pop in the middle. What have we got? Hey, come on, that's a result. That is a result. Three and a quarter pound of onions started off in a yogurt pot, grown on in a small water bucket, stood on my patio, stood in my garden. That is a result. Do you agree? A uh, deaf question, I know you agree. That's a result. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you have. Um, and just before I go, I've got three dogs flat out in here. I'm just going to try and gently lift this camera around uh, and let you have a look at them. That's um, Dotty, the Patadale Terrier. Whoa, where was that? I need to go down for this one. That's Tess, Dark Brindle Lurcher, flat out listening to my voice. I must have that effect on these dogs, they're all asleep, I put them to sleep and right round, right round. And that's Fern, the red brindle lurcher. I know what you're saying. Where's Molly? Well when these three uh, when these three visit, uh, Molly uh, likes her own space. Um, so I think she's through in the living room. Uh, she's got pride of place. Uh, we couldn't wind this video up without showing you Molly. Hi Mol. 
As I've opened the living room door, Molly's just wakened up. The only one not asleep in this house is me. Okay, so this is homegrown veg. Signing out. Hello. This is the end of the line for this beetroot trial. We're about to draw it to a conclusion. Uh, we're going to harvest these beetroot grown in these three pots. Uh, this was a trial to try and establish which of these three beetroot would be the best beetroot to grow in a pot. It started out as a two pot trial but then became a three pot trial when I had some spare beetroot seedlings. So we started out with this beetroot and this is a beetroot called Cardeal. Okay, uh, a Cardeal was described on its packet as being an ideal beetroot to take big or small uh, and they could be taken when they were a golf ball size. And that sounded to me like an excellent baby beetroot type to grow in a pot. So we sowed 11 seeds in this pot here, in this 10 inch pot. Okay, this is a beetroot called Cylindra uh, and the name tells you everything you need to know about it. Cylindrical beetroot and we sowed 11 seeds in this pot. These beetroot here are a beetroot called Perfect 3. These are the beetroot that I grew in my raised bed this year and because I had some spare seedlings I sowed another pot of uh, the beetroot. I planted them in this pot. So we have three pots of beetroot. Uh, we have Cardeal, we have Cylindra, and we have Perfect 3. 11 beetroot in each pot. Uh, some of these seeds did fail, uh, and I did replace them, uh, but too late, and I don't think those beetroot have made anything. But what we're going to do now, we're going to take all these beetroot. Uh, we're in the autumn of the year, moving into winter, and there's going to be no more growing in these guys. So we may as well take the lot. Uh, let's see what they've got. Okay, I'll just bring the barrow into the picture and we'll start and harvest these beetroot. Okay, we're going with Cardeal first. Um, all these beetroot have been in the pots about four months um, and as I've already said there's no point in leaving them any longer autumn's just about finished we're into winter um, they're not going to be growing much more so let's have them all out golf ball size would you say Looks golf ball size to me. It's our first car do. It's about as big as a marble. junior golf ball. Can you have a junior golf ball? Because it isn't as big as a golf ball. Can you hear those seagulls? They just come to aggravate me. Okay, so out of 11, five small beetroot, two about the size of a golf ball, and three not as big as a golf ball. That's Cardale. This is Cylindra. Okay, this is the cylindrical beetroot. Well, 
yeah. That's cylindrical, isn't it? That's a cylindrical beetroot. I mean, these guys are going to make nothing, are they? We're moving into winter. There's no future for these guys, so we may as well pull a lot. Well, already I'm thinking this isn't worth it. That's all we've got from 11. Just one that you would call a beetroot. These are two small ones. That's cylindra. Okay, this is perfect three. If we get anything from this pot, it's a bonus because these were the beetroot that I was sowing in my raised bed and there was no room for these guys, so we popped them in this pot. Um, That's perfect three. From 11 so on, we have four very small beetroot. Um, I'm going to take the tops off these now, clean these up, we'll pop them all on one pot and we'll see how many beetroot we've managed to pull from three pots standing on a patio. Okay. Was it worth it? What do you think? I mean, all we did was sowed these things, stood them on a patio for just about four months. They're only small. They're only supposed to be small. They're growing in a small 10 inch pot. Um, perhaps we overcrowded the pot. Perhaps we didn't get them in soon enough. Perhaps it wasn't a very good year for beetroot. Who knows? At home grown veg, when we show the beginning, there's usually a middle, and if there's a middle, there's always an end, and this is the end. Is it a good end? Is it a bad end? You decide. What do you think? Is it worth it growing beetroot in pots? Well, these guys are going indoors now, and they're going to be cooked, and will be eat. Uh, but there's not much more to say, is there? So this is homegrown veg, signing out. Hello, this is a pot of carrots called Artemis. Artemis is a pelleted seed. It's been in this pot for about four months. See the yellowing of the leaves now. Um, these carrots are ready to be harvested. So I'm going to try and take them from this pot in a one, eh? uh, And let's see what we get. And as it's a carrot harvest, my uh, gardening assistant Molly is in attendance, close attendance, I might add. So she knows there'll be something in this pot for her. Right. Now then. Take a look at this. That's how deep the carrots have got in that pot. I hope you can see this. I'm not too sure how this will be coming out. But these carrots have only got halfway down that pot. If you look at the length of that soil ball, which I'll take it out the pot again. That's it coming clear of the pot now. So these carrots have only got halfway down this pot. 
But that doesn't mean we'll have, we won't have some nice, good quality carrots here. Should we bump it? See what we've got. It's not going back in the pot now, is it? Can you say anything yet? Oh, hello. Well, not very big, but I'll tell you what. I think we've got a bit of quality here. Yeah? Hold on, Mol. Sort these guys out into this butter. Let's see what we've got. Just lay them out. A few small ones. So this is a 10 inch pot. No bigger than a domestic water bucket. Hey, Mol, you leave them there. Okay. Well, it's got to be said, I've, I've done better than this in previous years. Um, well, I have, you've seen my videos. But I'll tell you what, I am happy with these carrots. Some quality here, yeah. It really is. I mean, they're, yeah, they're small, but they sound. Sound, honest, they are, they really are. We're happy with that from a 10 inch pot. I'd like them to maybe have been a bit bigger and a bit longer. But the number we've got out, can't fold it. Can't fold it at all. And, got a few small ones for my mate. There yeah. So everybody's happy, aren't they? Well, And you can't see this, but she puts her foot on the leaves to hold it steady, pulls the carrot off. There, yeah, sweetheart. Oh, oh. Right, so this is uh, homegrown veg signing out. recognize it this is Victoria this is celery four heads of celery in a 10 inch pot the seeds were started indoors and then planted out into these pots uh, there's videos on the channel I'll show you show you me doing that the carrots that you've just seen also came from 10 inch pots and so did the leek uh, the onions came from the raised bed and the potatoes came from pots. Okay, let's have a look at this. So what we're going to try and do, um, we're going to try and get one of these heads of celery out of this 10 inch pot and leave the other three to grow on. Um, you've seen me lift stuff out of 10 inch pots before. Can we do it with celery? What do you think? Oh. Well, if you want to know what that little ball of celery looks like, that's what it looks like. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to try and take this one head of celery without disturbing the rest. Um, this goes wrong, it goes wrong. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> There's not much to say. I think about there. Uh, right, so just give this a uh, come on, come on. One head of celery. Okay, I'll put this to one side for a minute. And we'll put this, we'll put this root ball back in the pot. Oh, that looks a good air of celery at the back there, doesn't it? Can you see it? This one here. Looks a good eh? Anyway, we'll put that back in the pot. Uh, and where I've left that all, I'll drizzle some compost in just to uh, keep it all even, Stephen. 
Right, let's have a look at this celery we've just taken out. That's it. Come on, a 10 inch pot on a patty go for. You've got to give this a go. These are the parsnips. Um, I'm going to try and take all four in one go out of this bucket. You've never seen four parsnips harvested in, in one go before, I'm betting. And you've certainly never seen them grown in as small a bucket as this. Um, let's see if we can do this. Oh yes, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we've got it. Wow. How's that? Now then, let's see if we can bump this soil off. I've done this with carrots. I'm not too sure I can do it with parsnips. Okay, let's see if we can bump the soil off. Whoa. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, we're getting a reveal here, aren't we? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take these leaves off. It just makes life a bit easier. Okay. And these are going where the potato tops went. Down the garden. And we'll recover them later. Get out of it. Right. Now then. Well, hey. Come on. There isn't a lot of parsnip there, but I'll tell you what, there is some parsnip there, isn't there? I think this is worth doing. This one isn't as big, but there is some parsnip there. Let's have a look at this guy. <laughs> I don't think these parsnips are a stump-rooted variety, but for the purposes of this video, this is a stump-rooted variety of parsnip. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, look at that. Come on. From a 10-inch water bucket. In a square foot bucket garden. Parsnips. And not another vegetable disturbed. I've just harvested four parsnips. Not another vegetable in that square foot bucket garden disturbed. You try and do that in a conventional square foot garden. A potato harvested. Nothing else disturbed in that square foot bucket garden. You try and do that in a conventional square foot garden. Cardboard inserts, right. You can see the leaks now. Okay. Um, let's, drop this, uh, let's drop this pot. And if you've, been, um, if you've been following these leaks at all on my channel, you'll know that when I started, I brought these out from indoors and um, they were not as thick as a blade of grass when they went in here and had I not put them in here I would have been throwing them out um, so this looks as though it's a result whatever we get okay Let's see if we can loosen them up a bit let's see if they lift out I don't want to come. It's going to take a bit out. Ah, here we go. Oh, oh. Now, as you can see from that, completely root bound. But I had no option. I, you know, there's nowhere else I could grow these things. The raised bed was full, and they would have uh, finished up being thrown out. So, this is a crop for nothing, really, and grown on the patio. Oh, this might take a bit of breaking out of all these roots. Uh, it may get easier as they uh, as we get further down, it might not. Ooh. No. I'm gonna need to go indoors and get something to make life a bit easier here. So I'll just switch the video off. Give me a minute. Sorry about that. Thanks for waiting. I didn't realise that uh, these would be such a. Ah, oh, this spade's going through nice. Not ten leaks in here, so I've got to be careful that um, I don't actually split a leak. Oh, that's looking better. So what we'll do? 
we'll take these five and just sit them to one side and we'll try and get these five out shall we that one looks as though it wants to come first leg how's that that's our first one okay through again without cutting into one. Second leg. I'll wash this soil off in that the water that I used for the carrots. Oh this looks a good one. I'd like to get this one without uh, damaging it. Let's see if we can. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> Slid off like a collar. Nice leak. I'll just pop that through there, like that. Okay, five leaks. Five more leaves. <laughs> this is a bit more of a challenge than I thought it would be, but as I said, this is the first time I've grew leaves in pots, so I didn't want to expect, but I do now. <laughs> Be careful. Wow. Last two. Okay, right. All right, let's see what we've got here. As I say, I started them from seeds indoors, brought them out, and put them into this, this 10 inch pot and called, called them patio leaf. I mean, look at that. Now they're not the biggest leeks in the world, but they were never meant to be. They were just meant to be eating leek, you know, something that would you, you could prepare as a veg and eat. And I'm certain you can do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to wash this uh, compost off. Um, and then I'll tidy these up a bit more. And then we'll take a shot of them when they're properly tidied up, shall we? Because you normally have to take a couple of uh, flags off oh. in uh, leaf growing parlance uh, leaves you normally have to take a couple of leaves off there to tidy these things up I'm sure they'll look lovely tidied up okay two, three, four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten leaks and in a ten inch pot on a patio. Just give me a minute, I'll clean these up, bring the carrots back into the shot, and we'll see what we've got. Okay. There's the 10 leeks. Not the biggest in the world, as I've already said. But 10 fine leeks, 10 good eating leeks. It wouldn't have stood a chance if I'd if I hadn't used a pot. A pot on my patio. Um, I started these guys off as seed, brought them out, planted them up. It's 
stood them out on the patio, let them get on with it, basically. Same with the carrots, there's the carrots. Okay, I don't know if you can see those. Let's um, split them up a bit, see if that makes a nice picture for you. How's that? There's the carrots. All grown on a patio in pots. So if you've got some space, flat area, paved area, patio area, support its seeds, not much more than that. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Right Malt, let's see if we've got one for you. Come on, I know what you're after. Oh, there's a couple of small ones. Here we go. Here. Take that one if you want it. If you want it. Good girl. And there's another small one for you as well. That's it. All we've got to do is get these indoors before Molly gets at them again and um, a tidy up. Again, thanks for watching. Okay, notwithstanding what it actually says in this list, a home grown veg, we've definitely grown carrots, celery, leeks, potatoes, onions, beetroot and parsnips in buckets and we've grown them from start to finish. We've got a crop at the end of the growing cycle. It can be done. You've just seen it on those uh, clips of video that you've watched. If you want to give it a go, give it a go. To say you can't do it, do it. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Just try it. Try it. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is Homegrown Veg, signing out.